And hello there. <laughs> it is me again. Hello. And good morning. Good morning for me. It's been a while since I recorded a video, but here I am. I found something. Today I'm free, so I'm going to follow my good schedule. The one that is meant for full productivity throughout the day. So, in this, in today's video, I'm gonna talk, talk about people, especially boys who were raised by one single mother, and on top of that, they had a problem with that one single mother. So, first, I'm going to tell you a story of how my life is was, and it is now. So, let's begin. As a little kid, I had quite a lot of free freedom. Mom would always go to work and she would always bring something back when she was back home. She would sometimes bring sweets, anything, anything especially for me. And on top of that, everything that was needed for overall sur survival and eating. Maybe sometimes even clothes. She got a good pay with everything, but soon after that, and as she was doing that, I was quite free. I had literally everyone in my little place, little surrounding area as a friend. She would always find me playing with someone of them. Then something happened and the jobs moved. Oh, from one place she had to go to another. <clears throat> At least I think it was like that. So she goes there and she continues the good the good vibe still. But I noticed that she was a little bit more impatient. She continued to bring me stuff, bring me everything. We showered every day, we had money literally for everything. She was a very good worker and I'm grateful for that. She made my childhood kinda good. And you will see why I say kinda in a bit. And then she does that for a good while, I do my stuff for a good while, I go hang out with friends, hang out with everyone. Life is good for now, but then I start school and hmm, I started school and I think it was around third grade. First grade was Taka Taka. It wasn't so good, but it wasn't so bad. She sometimes came to school to caused me problems because she thought I was in trouble then second grade um, went well, went well I finished with perfect grades because my mother forced me to learn and whenever And next time, in fourth grade, in third grade, in third grade I was, I don't know how many years old, I suddenly discovered that she does not go to work anymore. I come back home and she, the next day, doesn't wake up early to go to the work. She wakes up early just to send me off to school. And she does that. When I come back home, she is still there. And she had nothing to do. Literally nothing to do. She made food, made something with her hands, or some of that stuff. 
but nothing that impressed. She wasn't bringing any value into her life anymore. So slowly we started showering less and less until a point where we started showering one day a week. It was Saturday only. And soon she closes me off. From all the friends I have, now I have no, literally no. I liked going to school then because home was a literal hell for me. I had no phone, no amount of discipline to help myself and no way to wash hands up that time. I didn't know anything about self-improvement. So I just went to school, had my fun and uh, came back home to, a, to an angry mother, usually trying to beat me up or to find out something that happened, even though it didn't happen. I even sometimes had to lie about stuff happening. I was going to, I'm telling her, I, no one touched me, no one did anything, but she continued saying, no, someone did. And that aside, one month later, her, her boss came, came to our, to our home. She knocks on the door and says, Please come back to work. You're an incredible worker. I am very grateful to you. And if you want, I will raise your pay to however much you want. Now, the problem was that this boss didn't pay her any insurance. So she had no pension in making as she was working. So she just said no and completely ignored her for the next time. For the following time that she was knocking on the door and talking to me. Then this roller coaster with me having no friends, school having school being fun for me and home being hell for me continued until sixth grade. Then, at school we had an experiment with a lot of chemistry, with bits. I talked about this in a previous video, but I'm going to tell you that again in short terms. We had this experiment with bits, and I did it at home. So my mom thought that I should bring it to home, to school, for the teacher to see. But I didn't want to because I know, I know it wasn't meant to be bring, bring to school. And no one did too. It was a very bad day. It was sunny outside, a perfect day, but as I was leaving to school, she threw the cup with beans at me, it spilled all over me, all over my back, and instead of showering, I went to school stinky. My friend noticed that, and he said, bro, please go shower yourself, you stink so bad. I took that very personally. And instead of listening to him, to his advice, to his criticism, I got deeply, deeply hurt by that. So that, uh, that was a result of more femininity in my life by my mother. So that happens. The next day, 
I go again. He says that again and over, over, over again. School becomes hell to me as well. I had only one classmate that was good friend to me. Everyone else was just saying stuff about me. You're stinky, you're on a... You're this, you're this, or this. Everything that they could think of. So... Then... I come to 9th grade. The second half of 9th grade comes the COVID situation. It gives me some time off. And in that some time off, I grew up bigger, stronger. My mother couldn't beat me up anymore. That was a good advantage. And I gained, gained some freedom. And as I was doing that, here I am today. I am completely not uh, not that not that test to her i can be on my own but from age five to age 13 i think or 14 my life was held on one way or the other I'm grateful for all of that experience because now I know what to do in those kind of situations and I wanted to record this video to tell you you maybe have some you may have the same problem as I do as I did and I'm going to give you a few tips on how to get through it if you are little your mom is like that, has some mental problems and always bursts her anger out on you. If you are little, I, su I suggest you run away. There is nothing you can do. You can just watch her scream at you, but Whatever she does at you, do not take her seriously. If you take her seriously, you will only make it worse for yourself. Always try to forget her the next day. Then you may be... Your situation may become better over time as you grow up as mine did my case stopped when i was bigger than her, in size and if that happens do not think of anything that happened back in your life do not think of the past do not condemn on her do not do anything of her she is still your mother, she still raised you. And you're there in your life because of her. Of course you could have been better if you had a father figure. But it is what it is. Do not complain about it. And do not condemn her about it. So my advice is to forget the past. Always think of the future in front of you, the things in front of you, the life in front of you. Imagine it in your mind. And every day, every single day, remind yourself of it. Greta to journal, meditate, read, and especially read, because reading is such a really great thing. You can do in your life. It's the best and most helpful tip I can give you. 
And if you cannot get a father figure, then read. I suggest you go to Hamza. Maybe he will be a good enough father to you. And as you watch him, also I read the book about masculinity. It co it is called the way of the superior man. Even if you are on the more feminine side, it will still make a good good impact on your life. So my first advice is to always forget the past and think of the future in front of you. And secondly, be on self-improvement. It's that simple. And if you are on self-improvement, you will gain patience. Be more patient about the stuff that your mother did to you. Be more patient for everyone else. You are making favor to everyone else, even to yourself. You are journaling, you are regretting to journaling, you are reading, you are meditating, you are doing all the good habits. And do not hide yourself behind YouTube videos, watching, watching them constantly throughout the day or playing video games throughout the day. Just look in front of you, see the Path of light that the sun shines upon you and think of everyone else before you that did such a great stuff by following that path. If you want an example of that person, it's Hamza. I have such a great respect for that guy. From the rock bottom even worse situation than mine. He, in one night, raised up straight to the top. He, he is a true example of what a man should be. So that's it for this video. I hope you find, I hope for you found any value at all in this video. I'm not very good at explaining stuff nor giving advice, but I will still continue to try. I won't give up. I will get better over time. So this is it for this video. Do the hard work when you don't feel like it. Look in front of you. Follow your lightest path you can get. And do not set yourself for small people goals. Always do the hard work when you don't feel.